And we are live. Okay. And just adjusting the camera. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Tom with Gold Spot Pens here, and here to show you another fountain pen unboxing video. Today, we have the subject of our unboxing video, uh, which is obviously a Waterman pen. They are made in uh, Paris, France. And uh, Waterman is an older uh, brand name that you might be familiar with if you collect vintage pens because uh, they were originally uh, a U.S. brand. And they are still known for some of the best vintage, flexible, uh, collectible type of uh, pens out there. So uh, they're very uh, vibrant uh, vintage pen market. Um, this is a newer model we're going to look at today, model from 2018. So we just unbox the... Uh, sleeve that's here, white sleeve with a gold metal foil here, and we have the Waterman Paris logo uh, imprinted on here as, as well with gold foil. And no, the first comment does not win the pen, uh, by the way, but uh, good try though, good try. So uh, so also just to note that this box has kind of sev has gone through several iterations in the last, let's say 10 years or so. And uh, this is probably by far the fanciest version. It's got some nice uh, wavy lines that are happening on there. Uh, then plus the gold uh, foil markings that are here. And it's a clamshell box, has a nice felt interior, Waterman Paris, printed in blue, screen printed on that felt interior there. Nice and plush. It's very, uh, you know, it has a very nice presentation overall. It looks like a much more expensive pen could possibly in the, be in this box. I mean, I've seen pens uh, that cost like $200, $300 that come in a box that's less nice uh, than this is. So we pull up here, and we've got the platform unveils the uh, ink cartridge to start with, which is a uh, blue ink cartridge. Then you have your Waterman instruction booklet slash warranty. So the uh, warranty is a uh, three-year warranty. And it uh, is available in several different languages. So you could see uh, all the after-service information here. So that's the kind of stuff that you'd want to keep on the side just to, you know, have it just in case. So normally the pen does not come with a converter. I know what you're saying. Let's get the pitchforks and torches out uh, because this is a relatively expensive pen and much more inexpensive pens come with converters. However, uh, the hemisphere line does not come with a converter normally, but we are uh, because of the fact that I don't want uh, people like Penboy Roy to come and call me up at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, asking me where is their converter for this pen. Uh, so I, we are actually including these for free now. Uh, it is a promotion that we are doing uh, just on a trial basis just to see how it goes. But we are including a converter and, and kind of putting in the money ourselves uh, to include a converter with the Waterman Hemisphere line. So if you add it uh, to your cart, any of, any of the Waterman Hemisphere fountain pens, it will automatically add a converter at no charge, which saves you, I think, about 11 bucks. So that's a pretty good uh, value there. So the this is the Hemisphere fountain pen in the new 2018 finish. It is called the Deluxe Blue Wave. And the reason why it's called Deluxe is because it has metal cap. It's a stainless steel uh, matte finish cap, and it has an engraving blue... Uh, an engraving of like a, a waves that are going here, undulate, and they kind of vary from steep peaks and valleys to more placid sort of uh, looking waves there. So it's a stainless steel cap. The uh, France is marked over here. So if you see that, I don't know if you can see that right there, you have France, and then you have the Waterman Paris logo on the front. And that is actually part of the barrel assembly here. So if you take this, actually, no, it's part of the section. I forgot. So it's part of the uh, the injection molded se uh, section here. You can actually see the lines where the uh, injection molding lines that are there. Um, but, uh, but other than that, the pen itself is a, a brass base. It's a, it's a brass metal base with this is a blue, matte blue lacquer coating that's on here. And you have a flat end for the barrel finial. You'll have a slanted end for the cap finial, which is 
uh, a, a, a signature kind of style for the hemisphere line. And also the expert too has that sort of uh, look. And so this is a slimmer type of pen. You could probably tell just by look, kind of looking at the overall size of it. It's not, it does have a very slight taper towards the ends, but for the most part, it's, it's quite cylindrical. The, as you were hearing before, you got a snap cap and uh, it, it does have like a nice firm snap to it. Cap does post on the back end, but does not post with a snap, but it posts fairly securely. The, uh, the nib sizes are only available in, e in either medium or fine point, and it's a stainless steel. It's kind of on the smaller size of the nib and has a plastic feed on the back end. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the writing sample, and then because of this um, smaller type of nib too, it kind of affects the writing experience I had noticed. So the, uh, the clip itself has, uh, has the Waterman logo, the, the, at least the W is die struck on the top there, and it's kind of split right in the middle to offer up a, an opening so you can see through to the uh, engraved cap. And uh, let's see, I'm just looking over my notes to see if I missed anything. Uh, I think that is pretty much it. Oh, let me talk uh, size dimension. So weight-wise, this is a 0.8 ounce or 22 grams, kind of a little bit on the lighter side. I think a uh, Pilot Metropolitan is just around this, this type of weight. Uh, the length closed is 4 point, uh, I'm sorry, 5.4375 inches or 138 millimeters. Then you have your open size is uh, 4.75 inches or 121 millimeters. Then you also have the uh, posted size is 5 point, uh, what was that, 9875 inches? So about just about six inches. I think it's like six, I mean, five and like 15 sixteenths of an inch, I believe, which is 150.8 millimeters. Then you have the uh, width at the cap band which is this, uh, well, this, this section right here, the cap band, that is uh, 0.4 inches or 10.5 millimeters. Then you have the, uh, in the middle part of the section here, I just kind of measured in the middle because it does have a little bit of a taper. And the uh, midsection here is 0.34 inches or 8.6 millimeters. So it's a, a very slender, slim pen. People like um, cross century or century two pens. This is the kind of pen that you'd be looking at as a um, kind of on the same level, or if you like the, uh, which we have here for comparison, uh, a smaller pen, let's say like a Kaweco Lilliput or a Diplomat Traveler. That's also another one to kind of take a look at that's in that sort of similar size. Uh, it's more of a uh, slender, you know, for somebody who prefers a, a lighter, more slender pen to write with. The um, writing sample we'll get to. We actually inked the pen already with Waterman inspired blue move this off to the side uh, stargazer wise I, I think lengthwise and that's something I could have taken a look at too but lengthwise I think that this is probably on the same uh, on the same level as a stargazer, but I think when you when you cap it and you have it le uh, this way, I think this is probably going to be a little bit longer than the stargazer, and I feel a little on the th on more thinner as well than the stargazer is. Just arranging my space here. Okay, let's make sure we're in the frame.
So one of the things I noticed too, with the smaller nib is that my fingers have to be closer to the page. Uh, you know, with typically with any larger or longer type of nibs, uh, I wouldn't have to ha necessarily have my fingers. I just feel like my fingers are very close to the page as I'm writing, um, which, I mean, for the ones that are resting on the paper, it kind of makes it a little bit more of a cramped style. But, I mean, that's something that it depends on your hand size and how you prefer to grip the pen. Uh, that's going to affect your, your writing style. The nib itself, this being a fine point, is responsive and it does it has a, like a little bit of feedback but just a touch it flows nicely a little bit on the drier side i would probably say but that also could be the uh the turquoise ink here of the inspired blue um overall just start up right away and it does not give me any issues i would probably say that the point size is pretty much on point for a european fine Really no issues with um, skipping or hard starting, anything like that. Just start it up right away. I'm just doing things really quickly, scribbling. Just kind of show you. Let's move this over here. Let's bring this up here. Yeah, and you know, and also too is to note about the the grip area here. The the grip area is a little bit on the uh, longer side. I would probably say. I, I know a lot of pens uh, have like a shorter kind of area, and they also have like screw threads to kind of tangle with. But this has a pretty nice uh, large grip area, so that if you do want to hold back on it, you can. Um, I, I kind of like, I, I don't know, it just kind of felt like it just naturally felt to me that I'm kind of more towards the, the nib, but I guess you could kind of bring it further back if you wanted to. And it actually is a little bit more uh, pleasurable to kind of write with it, with it kind of on, held a little bit further back, uh, just at least for my own taste. Um, you know, the size-wise, as far as like how slender this pen is, it's it's not for everybody, especially if you do have, uh, you know, pens that are a bit on the thicker side that you prefer writing with. So that's something to keep in mind. The uh, let's see, so, nib really doesn't have any sort of line variation. I was trying to see if I could push out any flex on it, but it's hard, so it's not giving me at all any sort of responsiveness in terms of being able to develop any line variation, but I mean, you didn't really expect it, being that it's a stainless steel nib. And I'll probably say it's more comfortable with the cap posted like this is. I kind of feel like it just might be a little bit too uh, light with the cap posted, although it is metal for the most part, and this is metal over lacquer, this uh, pen has a lightweight sort of feel. It doesn't have uh, a very hefty feel, although the fact that it is made mostly out of metal, I would probably say that the cap does back weight it a touch because of the fact that the cap is heavier, you know, and it's, it's that's more made out of more metal than I would say the barrel and the section would be. So it does kind of feel a little bit on the back weighted side, but uh, still kind of gives you that feeling of, you know, that you're writing with a significant type of pen. Um, let's see. And there's that nice little snap at the very end when you cap the pen, which is pretty nice. So just reading here. Yeah, it's 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 a pretty nice nib. You know, I was just seeing like the writing here, it 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 just worked right out of the box extremely nicely, 
good smooth flow, a little bit of feedback on the fine nib, but uh, you know, not not at all would I consider it scratchy, not at all. It just, it just you could feel it a little bit. It's not the smoothest uh, nib, uh, stainless steel nib. However, you know, it's it's a it's totally you know it's a, it's it's an aesthetic more than anything else. It's the fact that it's a very slender pen. It uh, it works well for people who do like to write with a a more uh, slim sort of fountain pen. The um, the this particular model, the deluxe uh, in the blue wave, uh, those we, these are going for one hundred and forty four dollars retail, and we sell them for one hundred and fourteen ninety five on the goldspot.com website. However, there are many other different types of models, and uh, you know the 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 the, it, the models do vary on price uh, based on uh, the the types of materials and types of finishes that is. So they do start at um, twenty dollars. I'm sorry, uh, saying twenty dollars. Uh, they start at seventy two and go up. So they are, um, you know, they vary in range as far as like whatever styles that you want to do, and uh, the uh, and and but the converters will come as per my discussion earlier. The converters uh, we are putting in ourselves and sponsoring them. We're putting them in every one of the fountain pens that you purchase uh, for a limited time. I can't say that it'll be ongoing, but it'll be for uh, for this time being. And uh, you'll definitely want to check that out if you are interested in the Waterman Hemisphere. So uh, if you have any questions, um, th you could always check out the website to see all the available styles at goldspot.com. Then there's also some that are on closeout. So some that are, let's say, discontinued styles from a few years ago, you might want to check those out because those will actually be on a, a better pricing uh, than most of the other styles. And um, like I said, all of them will come with uh, converters, which will be added to the cart for free after you add the cart, um, add the pen to the cart. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to uh, leave them below. And give us a like if you want to see some more fountain pen unboxings or pen unboxings in general. And uh, hit the notification bell when you subscribe so that you could get notified on your mobile or tablet for when we go live so that you could join us and ask some questions or just hang out and have fun. All right. Thank you so much for joining us and hope you guys have a great day. Stay inky, my friends.